loads of time, but can the actors just give us a couple of lines to introduce, introduce us to their characters and who they are in the show? You and Mark, I'll start. So we're giving lines? We're giving lines? <laughs> yeah, Do you want it to be it. like a character intro or a line that no, they... No, just... We've it, been off set three months, so they might not remember the lines. Not a line, just who, they, who their characters sure. are. Yeah. But we're not doing lines from the show. <laughs> I think, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a STEM it. teacher. Yeah, like I'm a STEM that. teacher, and if I had a line, it would probably be... <laughs> <laughs> Is there somewhere you're supposed to be? <laughs> Broadway. <laughs> Hi, um, I play Miss Jen, and she is the star of High School Musical, the musical <laughs> series. And um, my favorite line, I think, well, I have so many good ones. Thank you, Tim. But what? They're saying to stop the lines. <laughs> We're on this side. I'll tell you what to say. <laughs> Oh, is, so uh, it, we're, uh, some people think that a drama teacher's job is to put on a good show, but we're really in the business of saving lives. Aww. Right? It's something like that. <laughs> right, no, I have no notes. <laughs> um, I play Carlos. He's a student choreographer of our production of High School Musical, and um, I don't remember any of my lines, so... <laughs> <laughs> Um, my character is Courtney. She's a feminist, fashionista, beauty guru. It goes on and on. And on. Um, my favorite line would be, um, I'm dismantling the patriarchy this year, and I'm not afraid to start with you. <laughs> Which she says to me. <laughs> uh, I play Big Red. Uh, Big Red is Ricky's best friend uh, who kind of falls into this musical theater world. He knows nothing about musical theater, uh, but he falls into this musical theater world uh, as the supportive best friend and, um, and starts to sort of experiment with what that's like. Um, and uh, I guess we've moved on to now saying lines from the show. Uh, I say, dude, oh wait, he, I say, uh, well, we, we hate musicals. And then he says, well, I don't hate musicals. I just hate when people break out a song in the middle of the street. And I say, dude, that's a musical. <laughs> uh, so I play Ashlyn, and my character is um, definitely, I would say, like the peacemaker of the group. Just wants everyone to be happy. Has a very, you know, loving heart. Just wants everyone to have a nice peace of mind. Um, and uh, my favorite line from my character is, I'm dying, I'm deceased, yes. <laughs> um, I play Ricky. He's best described as a snarky sweetheart. Um, he's a skater who thinks he's a little too cool for a guitar, but he's really not. Um, and he'll do whatever it takes to make amends with um, his girlfriend, Mimi. Um, Ex-girlfriend. Ex, it, it's on and off, all right. Um, no, but... Uh, one of my favorite lines is, uh, it's so true, and I find this true in my life when I started doing musical theater, and that is, um, he says, uh, I'm misquoting it, but it's something for some of this, this has become a family. Um, and I think a lot of people will resonate with that. Um, and I'm getting emotional, so I'm going to pass the baton. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I play Nini. Uh, she's a junior and a total theater nerd, um, and throughout the course of the show, she's dealing with normal teenager things, like she's taking her SATs, and she's dealing with boys, and dealing with finding her voice um, amidst all this chaos of um, the theater. And uh, my favorite line from her is, I think in episode one, um, she's auditioning and all the lights go out, and uh, Miss Jen goes, oh, like, we can do it later, I, I, I don't want to throw you, and she goes, I'm not thrown and um, proceeds to um, do this show-stopping number. Uh, and I think that just speaks to her arc uh, in the series, which I can't wait for you guys to see. Sophia. <laughs> Sophia? Yeah. Um, so I play Gina Porter. She's the transfer student, kind of like the Sharpay 2.0. Um, she's very mischievous and scary at times, but um, <laughs> she has a lot of layers, and I think that's going to be fun for the audience to see her development over the series. Um, but my favorite Gina line is probably when she's introducing herself to Nini in the first episode, and she says, Gina, sophomore, transfer student. <laughs> Uh, I play EJ, and EJ is Nini's current boyfriend. Uh, Shots fired. Uh, uh, and EJ is a very good-hearted guy. He's just very passionate, and uh, 
<laughs> Nini is one of those things he's passionate about, and so in that he gets himself in a bit of a pickle sometimes. And uh, as he's trying to work his way through that, gets himself in a little bit more of a pickle. Uh, but I think one of my favorite lines that EJ says, and I think it's something that everybody can relate to and at some point probably has thought, uh, and I love it, it's, uh, he says, I am me, and that is the only me that I need to be. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so much wisdom in this cast. Okay, okay. Um, question here. And yet you you have an amazing, talented cast sitting in front of us. Talk to us about the process of whittling it down to who we see that you finally cast. Because I'm sure that were, there were so many talented actors and actresses that you saw. What was it about these guys that you knew was going to gel well together? Yeah, the, the, casting, <laughs> pro the, the casting process I, um, is always challenging. Um, and I think uh, one of the things that was important to me that I said on day one when I pitched the show to Disney, which was like, it's gonna be a docu-style series about a group of kids putting on High School Musical, and I was inspired by Waiting for Guffman and The Office. I wanted to find kids who could really sing live, because we don't do lip syncing a lot in the show, we wanted like real voices captured live, who, who could really play their real ages, so Olivia is 16 to play 16, and also who I want to be stuck with in Salt Lake City for six months. Like, I needed good people because I come from the theater and I know, like, the real fun of theater is being backstage in the dressing room. And so Joshua Bassett, the very first audition tape I saw of hundreds of kids was Josh. And the minute I saw that tape, I knew I had a Ricky because of both the charisma and the lack of, like, sort of Hollywood polish. Um, me, Olivia. Wait, that was a compliment. That was a... We'll get that in post. We'll, with a startling Hollywood polish. Um, with, uh, you know, with Olivia, it was the fact that she walked in, no makeup, clearly did not have stage parents. She was there because she just has like a story to tell. And uh, when I learned that she is a songwriter later on in the series, I gave her the shot to write a song. And in three days, she turned around this song that like Regina Spector would want to write. It's so special. And so uh, it's, it's always about trying to identify what makes this person unique. For Sophia Wiley, who had come from this Disney Channel background, has such a following online. So many girls look up to her. I certainly would have as a kid. I would have wanted to dance like you and dress like you, if we're being honest and on the record. Uh, and she came in and had sort of never played a villain before and, and, and starts out as the sort of thorn in the side of Nini and is able to grow over 10 episodes into an arc that I think a lot of people will relate to, which is that you're always the protagonist of your own life, even when other people think of you as the antagonist. For Matt, it was the fact that he walked in with this kind of um, charm and polish and looking a certain way but could like land a punchline a Hollywood polish Josh you should probably trade that and then we read we read Matt Cornette with um, Julia Lester back there um, and they play cousins in the show and they had such natural effervescent family vibes that um, it was sort of like undeniable we were always gonna hire them. It was also, he's from Arkansas, and one time in his audition I was like, can you just try EJ with an Arkansas accent? <laughs> and thus EJ forever, Matt wished EJ was Southern. <laughs> yeah, he like fully no Southern. And then, and then from Mark St. Cyr, who was cast out of New York City, we got a tape, we could not find a Mr. Mazzara, he's the STEM teacher who needs to land a bunch of punchlines, super dry. And all of these guys came in who had tons of TV credits who were hilarious but played everything really big. And we wanted to reinvent the Disney brand for Disney Plus and do something that felt really sort of premium and different and streaming and rough around the edges with this shaky docu style. So Mark sent in this video that practically was shot on an iPhone in selfie mode. And I was like, he's either a serial killer or he should play Mr. Mazzara. And he played Mr. Mazzara. Um, Kate Reinders and I did Gypsy together. I used to be a dancer. She starred in the 2013... 2003? Yeah. The Bernadette Peters revival of Gypsy as Bernadette Peters' daughter. I was a chorus boy. I was always intimidated by her. And then all these years later, she like literally brought a flute to the audition, not like a weird euphemism. And she, and she auditioned for us and she was this drama teacher who cares so much about theater and has so much to say to the next generation. Frankie Rodriguez came in. The character of Carlos was based on a very dear friend of mine who was the male captain of the color guard in his own school. 
And, you know, when, when I cast Frankie, I, I, I saw in him the fact that everything that got me picked on in middle school gets me paid now. <laughs> and, uh, and that is who Frankie is. And he announced himself as Carlos instantly with Dara Renee, who was a star of Freaky Friday, the, the Disney Channel film. She walked in, she was going to have three lines in the pilot, and then you couldn't stop looking at her. And I believe that Dara is the type of person who little girls across America are going to say, I haven't seen hair like that on screen. I haven't seen emotion like that on screen from the type of character where I'm used to just being a punchline. For Larry, I was looking very specifically at Larry Saperstein, who plays Big Red. I needed uh, somebody who could be a real sidekick type, but who could also emerge as a romantic interest with his own sort of dreams and loves. And Larry, and every guy who came in to read for Big Red was this kind of over-the-top, like, Disney brother! And they were all great, and many of them would have been cast in a different type of show. And in our show, he was so under the radar that I knew we needed that authenticity, and we also all felt in the room that if we cast Larry as Joshua Bassett's best friend, it would also make us like Ricky more, because Larry is so lovable. And then lastly, Julia Lester came in, she's back there, and Julia is a real dyed-in-the-wool theater kid, the type of kid who I would, you would have been like my girlfriend in middle school. <laughs> Meaning she would have like braided my hair on Saturday nights, and we um, and she came in and sang a song from The Secret Garden, which is one of my favorite musicals. And then I said, just out of curiosity, do you know anything about by, by Sarah Bareilles? And Julia whipped out this gorgeous rendition of Gravity a cappella in Burbank uh, with no accompaniment, and she announced herself as the type of character who uh, uh, is going to everyone's going to want to be her best friend. You're going to wish that that character could read your horoscope because Julia brings so much heart onto the screen. So the casting process was so challenging and also there were no runner-ups for any of them. And I so believe in this cast that I lived in New York for 20 years and I moved to LA full-time to do this show because I would literally bet everything on the people you're looking at right here.